All right, well, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Fred Steinman. I'm the uh, current director for the Northern section of the Nevada chapter of the American Planning Association. Uh, and I appreciate you taking the time to join us today for our, what seems to be our bi-weekly Nevada APA Northern section online educational uh, brown bag. Uh, today we have uh, two individual speakers will be talking about the impacts of COVID-19 on transportation in Northern Nevada. Uh, before I hand it off to our first speaker, uh, just a couple housekeeping announcements. Uh, first and foremost, again, uh, if you have logged in and you aren't presenting, uh, please make sure out of courtesy to everyone to mute your microphone. Uh, that way uh, we can let our presenters present uninterrupted. Uh, after about 30 to 40 minutes of presentation, we'll have some time for questions and answer at the end of both presentations. Um, at that time, you'll be able to ask questions either via the live mic or through the online chat function in Zoom. Uh, as a reminder, this uh, Zoom presentation is also being recorded uh, and in the next couple of days will be posted on the Nevada chapter of the American Planning Association's YouTube channel. Uh, where actually all our past educational luncheons uh, that have been hosted via Zoom uh, have been posted. Uh, so if you are interested in checking out some of our previous uh, online educational brown bags, uh, please go to YouTube and just search for APA Nevada, and that should take you directly to the chapter's YouTube page. Uh, also, um, I was asked by the chapter's executive committee to share with each of you uh, that the chapter um, is still working on the technical aspects of delivering our fall 2020 annual conference. Uh, more than likely, it will be in an online format uh, with a limited uh, group of presenters and sessions. Uh, but that information will be sent out to chapter members probably uh, within the next month or so. Uh, our next online educational brown bag will be held two weeks from today on Wednesday, July 8th. Uh, I'm still working on confirming a speaker or speakers uh, for the July 8th brown bag. And of course, once that information is all put together, I will send that out to each of you. Uh, today's session is worth 1.0 APA AICP continuing maintenance credits. Uh, so if you are interested in earning up to 1.0 AICP CMs, uh, please use the event number that was provided on the flyer that I sent you uh, to self-report with AA, APA and AICP. Uh, that way you can get credit uh, towards your AICP certification or your maintenance. Uh, with all of the housekeeping announcements uh, out of the way, uh, it's my pleasure to introduce both our speakers. Our first presenter uh, will be Amy Cummings. Uh, Amy is the Deputy Executive Director and Director of Planning at the Reno or the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County. Uh, and following Amy will be Brian Culpin, the Vice President of Marketing and Public Affairs with the Reno Tahoe Airport Authority. But before we hear from Brian, it's my pleasure now to turn the reins over to Amy. Amy, if we've worked out all the technical aspects, please feel free to share your screen and get us started. Thank you so much. Uh, did that work? Are you able to see uh, the slides? Yep, we can see it. Great. Well, I appreciate being invited to speak with you and for everyone taking time to learn about the impacts of COVID-19 on transportation in Northern Nevada. So I'm of course, I'm gonna be focusing on surface transportation here in Reno Sparks of Washoe County in our urbanized area. Going to be looking at roadways uh, as well as transit service and what we're doing just as an organization on the administrative side. So are you able to see that slide advance? Uh, actually, Amy, it looks like we are seeing an open PowerPoint full file, not the actual presentation. So you, you might want to try sharing the open presentation one. Sorry. Right. Well, 
Well, it doesn't seem to be changing on my end, so. Sure. <laughs> Um, if, if you go back into PowerPoint and start the slideshow presentation, uh, alt tab back into zoom, you should be able to select the, the running slideshow that way. Well, we may not have full screens, but hopefully you can at least see the slides. That'll be fine. Great. Well, I wanted to start next with some data that was provided to us by the Nevada Department of Transportation. And I think this is really key and I'm sure it makes sense to most of you from your personal experiences uh, driving around our community or being in our community. Uh, with the start of the stay at home order, um, we had a pre precipitous drop in uh, vehicle miles of travel. So that's what this is showing you. It's comparing the uh, March, April, May into June traffic volumes on I-80 in downtown Reno from 2020 to what they were in 2019. So you can see we started the year with traffic above, you know, five to 10 percent above 2019 levels. And then we had a steep fall off in April down to about a 63 percent reduction at the lowest point. Um, but it's been coming back steadily. So since fuel tax is the primary source of revenue for all of our road construction projects, both for RTC and the state of Nevada, we're optimistic that as our continu community continues to reopen, um, that those traffic volumes are gonna come back and uh, it will be a great impact to our fuel tax revenues. But something that we're gonna continue to monitor as is uh, in time. On the positive side, we do have several projects under construction. Governor Sisolak, we were very pleased to identify transportation and construction, as well as public transit, as essential services. So we are able to continue with our construction projects. The state issued guidance for our construction crews and our contractors to follow when they're out in the field to protect their safety to the maximum extent possible um, out there in those work sites. Uh, so we implemented those guidelines and we're able to continue with our construction projects. And for those of you who are familiar with our Virginia Street bus rapid transit extension, we were actually able to accelerate that because as you know, the Midtown District is full of local businesses um, and most of those were shut down during April. So we, they reached out, several folks reached out to us to say, what can you do to accelerate this construction? so that when businesses are able to reopen and folks can go back to restaurants again, uh, these, this construction will be over, or at least over more quickly than originally scheduled. So we, we worked with SNC, who's our contractor there, uh, and the city of Reno, and surveyed all of the businesses that would be affected, and were able to do a full shutdown of the street, uh, whereas previously we had it open to one-way traffic the entire time. So with that, we were able to reduce our construction schedule by about three months in the Midtown area. Uh, we're gonna see uh, some openings July 4th uh, on the Southern section of that, and we'll have the whole thing open in August to two-way traffic again. One of the other benefits that folks uh, are starting to see is this is a project that went from uh, sidewalks that were in many sections, 18 inches wide with a pole in the middle uh, to what are now 10 foot plus sidewalks, as wide as 20 feet in some areas. So we're seeing new opportunities for outdoor dining, outdoor retail, and the city of Reno I know is working with some of those businesses so that people in this uh, time when you're constrained in your um, indoor spaces, these great sidewalks are gonna provide some additional uh, opportunities for economic growth as we start to reopen. So we really appreciate the patience of our Midtown businesses and the for the city of Reno to, to move that forward. But I wanted to spend most of my time talking about public transit. And um, it's been dramatically impacted by the COVID-19 pandemic. And much as with auto tra uh, traffic, transit ridership fell by over half when the stay at home order went into place. And what that tells you is that about half of our transit trips are for these essential trips, people getting to essential jobs, essential services. We know that Renown Medical Center is one of our um, partners with our employee pass uh, subsidy program. 
people are getting to jobs at medical facilities, pharmacies, grocery stores, um, warehouse and distribution facilities in our region. And these are just all critical for our community. Uh, and transit uh, stayed open and provided those services. And I think we, we always want to emphasize the importance too of the heroes operating those public transit vehicles. Uh, the heroes helping heroes is a, is a big message that you hopefully heard a lot of during the stay at home order um, because these essential trips were able to happen because of that transit workforce that was uh, operating buses during that entire time. So uh, we also, of course, want to protect those operators and our passengers as much as possible for making these essential trips. And we really appreciate the, the partnerships of our contractors, Keolis and MTM, and uh, particularly the Federal Transit Administration. FTA has delivered uh, masks, not just for our administrative use um, and our operators, but also for customers. Those are now available at 4th Street Station in Centennial Plaza. And we're doing our part to make, make sure everyone can ride safely now that they are coming back to RTC for transit trips. And here's just a few examples of things that uh, we, and again, our partners, Keolis and MTM are doing. Uh, we did continue to provide full transit service during the shutdown. We didn't have any reductions. Uh, this is the one time you'll ever hear a transit agency happy that we had fewer than 10 people on the bus at any given time. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we could promote social distancing in our bus stops and on our vehicles. So we didn't want to cut service. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that we maintain our transit workforce. They're just uh, such a, an essential resource for our entire community. We wanted to make sure that we were able to continue uh, to employ uh, those critical workers. And there were some cases where we had some routes that uh, still had some pretty high ridership. So we boosted service on those routes to get, again, get that passenger load down so we could maximize social distancing. And then some of the measures uh, you may have noticed on some of our buses, we're closing off some of the seats closing the seats off that are closest to the operators, installation of some movable plastic barriers so that the operators can control whether those were open or closed. Um, and we did close our uh, four street station buildings. So to the public, those have just reopened for customer service only. Uh, the waiting rooms are closed and the bathrooms are still closed, uh, but you can now get into four street station for customer service needs. And Centennial Plaza remained open uh, during the entire time. We were, of course, uh, emphasizing cleaning uh, throughout the day, as well as a very thorough cleaning and sanitizing of all of our buses every day. Um, and again, appreciate uh, the resources that FTA um, and our contractors brought to bear, as well as RTC, to be able to make that happen, to keep our vehicles as safe as possible. And I wanted to highlight uh, the importance of our community participation. So we had a Stuff a Bus event uh, that was hosted by City of Reno and City of Sparks and RTC participated. You can see some of the downtown ambassadors there. Um, we collected huge amounts of food, paper products, and, and things that were critical needs for seniors in our community. And we're able to, uh, in some cases, help deliver those. Uh, our paratransit operators, as you might imagine, had fewer calls for trips during the, the stay at home order. Uh, so instead of taking seniors to the St. Washoe County Senior Services and Senior Center for meals, we were able to deliver meals and prescriptions to some of those seniors um, to again provide that community need. But there's been just a huge outpouring of support um, from, from our local residents. And I wanted to highlight as well the demonstration project on FlexRide. Our first demonstration started last fall. Uh, ridership did fall, again, with the stay-at-home order, as, as most others did. But it started to bounce back much more quickly uh, and robustly. So we think that bodes very well for our other expansions of FlexRide. We just in May launched our North Valley service and have two more in Spanish Springs and Somerset that will be um, expanding this fall. So uh, we think that maybe because it's more of a neighborhood type of service, um, it's a smaller vehicle, so you know you'll be encountering fewer people when you take those trips, uh, but we're very pleased that that ridership has started to rebound. And uh, in terms of our administrative offices, I want to let you all know that your RTC employees are here for you. Uh, we've continued to be working the entire time. 
although not physically here in our office uh, for the most part. We've had a, a skeleton crew here in the office. Our board meetings have been remote. Our advisory committee meetings have been on Zoom. Um, we do uh, have virtual public meetings as well since we can't get everyone together. We are continuing to work on our 2050 regional transportation plan and just launched our public workshop for that. So go to rtcwashoe.com to see more information there. Um, but we're doing what we can uh, to best protect our staff here, providing masks, requiring folks to wear those when they're not in their, at their desk, at their workspace, um, and are gradually starting to bring people back to the workplace. But uh, again, I want to emphasize that your RTC staff are here for you and all of our projects are continuing on schedule. So that wraps up my summary of uh, surface transportation impacts. Cool. And are we holding questions to the end or jumping right into airports? If, if we can, uh, I, I prefer holding our questions for Amy uh, until after Brian's presentation. Um, if you do have questions specific for Amy and what the RTC is doing, uh, if you could just you know write yourself that note or you could even uh, write those questions in the chat box. Uh, I'll make sure that we get to them as soon as we're done with Brian's presentation. Uh, but thank you very much, Amy, uh, for your very insightful presentation on to how COVID-19 has impacted surface transportation within the greater Northern Nevada area, and specifically what RTC of Washoe County is doing to address it uh, and ensure the public's health and safety uh, in regards to public transportation. Thank you very much, Amy. Uh, we'll shift gears uh, a little bit and talk about a different type of transportation. Uh, again, uh, Brian Culpin is with us. Uh, Brian uh, is, the, again, the Vice President of Marketing and Public Affairs uh, with Reno Tahoe Airport Authority. Uh, and Brian, it's my pleasure to hand the presentation on to you and to your team at the Airport Authority. Brian. Great, Brad. Thanks for having me. Uh, we're joined by Brandy McCoy and Art from my team here who are helping with some technical difficulties, so glad to have them assisting me here today. Uh, but thanks for having us. I'm more than happy to talk about the airport and, and where we are. A little bit of a commercial, we have our board of trustees, which help run the airport. Uh, they're community representatives from all different uh, types of businesses that bring great expertise and acumen to uh, the airport, and we appreciate the administration that they give us. Uh, and who we are, we're the owners and operators of the, not only the Reno Tahoe International Airport, but also Reno Stead. Uh, we have nine passenger airlines that serve RNO, three cargo airlines. That's a lot for a community our size, and we're proud to have that level of air service. Uh, 23 gates, and we are a 24-7 operation. Uh, we're also an economic engine, uh, but no local tax dollars go into operate the airport. Uh, we are actually a you know, self-funded, self-sufficient operation. So uh, the money that comes in from parking and from our stores and our restaurants and our rental cars are what fund the airport operation. And when we're not involved in COVID, we're the 66th busiest commercial airport in the U.S. We're not the 66th largest metropolitan area. And that helps you appreciate the level of air service that we have here at Reno Tahoe. And we're proud that we generate about 52 million in tax revenues uh, for Northern Nevada, in addition to the 3.1 billion that we generate an economic impact for the region, and about 11 million of the, those tax dollars go to the Washington County School District. This gives you a picture of how well we were doing pre-COVID, and we were really, really doing great. Uh, we had a, a terrific climb over a six-year period. Uh, we were at 4.4 million passengers, and we had had 57 consecutive months of passenger growth. That's incredible for an airport. Uh, and that's really a tribute to a lot of factors. Uh, but one of the advantages that we have at Reno Tahoe International is we have what we call RAS, the Regional Air Service Corporation. And that is a conglomeration of entities that come together to help fund and support air service when we bring in new flights to our region or even support the flights that we already have. And it's really a cross-section of our hotels, the ski industry, Convention and Visitor Bureaus, and a lot of private businesses, in addition to EDON and the Chamber of Commerce and ND Energy, but switches involved and IGT, and uh, it's just an amazing grouping that contribute dollars that when we bring in a flight, they'll support it financially. And this is something that other communities bring to the table. And that's really helped us build that air service over those six years. And this is what's going to help us also climb out of the challenge we face now with in, in COVID-19. Having a community team like this really fighting for air service is a, is a great thing to have in our region. 
Uh, we also just opened the Aloft Hotel. If you're familiar with the entrance of the airport, you know where the Hyatt Hotel was. Well, we were selling out the Hyatt almost every night. And so we needed another hotel. We opened the Aloft in May and they're already doing great for us. It's a very unique look, a very high tech hotel. If you get a chance to stay there or put some friends or relatives there. I'm sure they'll comment on the experience. It's very millennial oriented with its design, with live music each night, just a really fun hotel that we go to here at the airport. We also own Reno State Airport, uh, and that is a great 5,000 acre former military base that we have. Uh, and it is known as a UAS test range now, as well as a general aviation airport. A lot of investment up there in recent years, 22 million uh, in some uh, revamped runway facilities. And of course the drone facilities are now known really nationwide as a testing site. And just about every uh, high tech company or online retail company um, has been using that facility to test drones over the past few years, and we've got some plans to continue that here in the future. This slide really gives you a, an interesting glimpse. It looks like a thunderstorm up top up there, but I'm going to draw your attention uh, to the red line. Uh, that shows you the drop that we took in passengers in you know, March into April and, and in May. Uh, we really fell off a cliff there, as so did every airport all across the United States of America. We lost 96% of our passengers. Our lowest point was 212 passengers on April 11th. I did an interview in the terminal that day uh, with a TV station and never in my 16 years here had I heard my voice echo in the terminal. And that's how empty our airport was and it was being experienced like that all across the country. So what's exciting about that red line is, is it didn't just flatline. You can see it's starting to climb as we get to May and into June. And we've climbed from that 212 passengers to here on the 24th, uh, we've, we've got an improvement. Uh, we've seen those numbers go up. Uh, we're gonna push up against tomorrow, almost 1,800 passengers uh, flying out of the airport. We wanna break to that 2,000 level. Uh, typically, we'd see about 5,000 passengers, 6,000 passengers per day uh, in this time of year. And so we wanna get back up to those numbers, but. Any incremental growth is good and important for our community and that economic impact that we bring. Uh, but May compared to April, you can see the climb. You know, we had such a drop and then May was literally 162% better than April in terms of our passenger increase. So we're excited to see that level of growth. So these are positive signs for the airport. Moving forward, uh, you know, we really have to focus on what can we do in the airport environment to make people feel comfortable traveling again? Uh, we were in the middle of a, an advertising campaign when COVID really hit that we had to stop. You know, it was all about trying to get people on aircraft and great deals that we offered. And that certainly wasn't the right message in the middle of COVID. And so now we know what we face. Uh, we have folks who are eager to fly. Uh, they maybe hadn't seen that grandchild that was born during COVID or they had a honeymoon they postponed and they're not worried about COVID and they want to get on board a flight and go. Uh, so we know we're seeing those passengers now, but there's a whole bunch of other passengers out there that are concerned. Maybe they know someone who had COVID or they're avid news watchers and they're concerned and they're rightfully concerned when we're going through a pandemic. We have to understand that and respect that. And so what we're doing is putting together a campaign, both physically what we're doing in the terminal and what we'll be communicating from a marketing perspective to make people feel safe again when they fly and offer the safest airport possible for their flying experience. So we've partnered with Noble Studios. They're an advertising firm that we utilize here at the airport. And we brainstormed right after you know, COVID really took its, its heaviest toll with us there from March going into, uh, into April. And we said, what can we do? And so we came up with a campaign that we call, we move you safely. We Move You is the brand of the airport. And we added the word safely because studies have shown that people want to know what's being done in the airport environment before they get on board an aircraft. It's going to make it a safe travel experience. And I'll show you that. Uh, this is the Airports Council International. They did a, a survey of passengers all over North America asking them what do they want to see in the airport environment when they fly again or when they're ready to fly again. And here's what they learned. Passengers want to see airports that mandate the physical distance, that social distancing of six feet is very important in the minds of travelers. Uh, pastors also believe that they and others should provide their own facial coverings if required for their journey. 
And you're seeing that now with the airlines requiring facial coverings. Pastors also want to see restrooms and public areas cleaned at least once every 30 to 60 minutes. And, and I have to point out, uh, you're all locals. You know that this is probably the cleanest airport you've ever traveled through. We are very highly rated on every survey we see on that. And we're taking our cleaning to a completely different level, even more than we've done before with a very dedicated crew, really high tech machinery, and then also chemicals to help keep this airport the cleanest it's ever been. And it's always been incredibly clean. Uh, other key research, uh, top four sources where pastors think they'll come into contact with germs. Number one is on the airplane. Uh, the airlines are really taking steps to mitigate those concerns with uh, how they're leaving middle seats open and how they're increasing the turnaround time between flights to clean those aircraft as thoroughly as they can. Also, people are concerned about the security checkpoint. How clean is it? Are the bins clean? Are they cleaning you know, between passengers? What are they doing? Uh, we're partnering with the TSA on their cleaning as well. Uh, they're also concerned about other passengers, and that's where the masks come in. Uh, they want to make sure that they're not you know, picking up germs or spreading germs to other people. And again, number four is the restrooms. And we're working very hard to keep those as clean as we always have, but even cleaner. Uh, top four mitigation strategies that are preferred by passengers as they travel. Uh, hand sanitizer is number one. And we have those in the airport. We have Corel sanitation stations we can travel through. Uh, those are a great addition right now to the airport. And also physical distancing. We have placed 1,000 decals on the floor of the airport uh, to help people physically distance. The, they're right in front of the ticket counters. They're in the bag plane. They're in the gate holding areas. They're in our stores and our restaurants to help you keep that safe distancing when you travel. Um, you know, again, limiting seating. Uh, the airlines are doing a great job of that. A lot of times keeping those middle seats open and just not selling all the seats on an aircraft so you can feel more comfortable. And then what's around the corner uh, is touchless technology. Uh, you're going to see in the future more of a travel experience where it's not as touch heavy as it has been. Expect to use your phone much more about a year to a year and a half from now and how you will conduct yourself through that travel experience. There's even talk about taking your your carry-on bag and literally checking it at a ticket counter and then it meets you up uh, on your flight when you're about to board and it's been thoroughly sanitized for your journey. So we know we have new technology coming, ultraviolet light, uh, we have electrostatic cleaning going on now in the airport, so a lot of new technology will come to bear. Uh, another key research finding was airport trust. Um, they said that they trust airports to take the necessary precautions to keep people safety and we're proud of that. You know, that, that is a way you want to be viewed as a business, that people trust you to do the right thing. And that's exactly what we're doing with all what we're doing in the terminal, as well as with the campaign to promote it. And passengers overwhelmingly feel comforted by the sight of airport workers wearing personal protective equipment like masks and gloves. And you will see people throughout the airport environment who are wearing their masks, some wearing gloves. And a lot of, you know, a lot of our, our tenants are doing the same thing, the airlines, the rental car companies, the stores and restaurants. But pastors also want to see a consistent travel experience. So what's happening at R&O would be the same thing that experience in Oakland or in Las Vegas. And, and so there's, there's true consistency in that travel experience. And this one really highlights the importance of masks. And you know, there are people out there that disagree about masks. There's a political issue with it. And, to us, it doesn't matter if you're on the right or on the left or how you're gonna vote in November. What matters to us is that people experience a safe travel experience. And if masks help that travel experience, then that's what we're going to do. We're gonna make sure that when you go through that travel experience here at RNO, there are people wearing masks. We're handing out masks with our customer service teams as well. Uh, they're handing out about 50 to 60 masks a day right now to passengers as they come through. And if you're going to board an aircraft, you're going to be asked to have a mask on by the airline. So bear that in mind when you travel. Uh, it's not about politics, it's about getting people on board, restarting the economy here in our community, and getting people flying again. This is a couple little glimpses of the campaign we're going to run. Uh, you'll see this kicking off actually on Monday of next week. It's called again, We Move You Safely, and it really highlights what we're doing for safety in the airport. You know, and in the past that we've done, advertising programs, a lot of times we'll use models or actresses and actors, and, and we didn't do that. We wanted you to see the actual people 
that are keeping the experience clean and safe when you come to Reno, Tahoe, or Nashville. And these are our heroes. Uh, these are the people who were, again, all of us were essential workers, and they kept the airport open and operating really on the front line. Uh, and they kept our cargo operation going, which brought in ventilators and masks and gloves. And, and yes, that all important toilet paper you couldn't find. Those were flying in on our cargo aircraft. Our cargo did not drop during the pandemic. It stayed up there with all that online retail and all those supplies coming through. Um, we're proud of the role that we've played in the pandemic. Uh, but this is one of our custodians here at the airport just doing her job, wearing her mask, wearing the gloves, and, and keeping it a safe travel experience for you and your family. This is one of our security specialists on the front curve, uh, a veteran, a former Navy corpsman, uh, proud to be out there keeping people safe as they travel and wearing these masks. And that's what you'll experience from front curve through the airport all the way on board to the aircraft. Uh, we have airline employees probably wearing their masks behind plexiglass shields, uh, to keep both of you safe, both themselves and the passengers as they come through. And there's a, a team of employees from one of our airlines. Our first responders, a lot of people don't realize we have our own police force and our own fire department here at Reno Tahoe International. And they certainly have the right PPE to wear and they're proud to wear it. And they'll respond to medical calls in our terminal and they'll be they're properly ready to help out anyone in the airport environment. And our friends at the TSA. Again, they're our friends uh, keeping their community safe, uh, wearing their masks. And she's got a big smile behind the mask, or you can tell by her eyes. Um, happy to help people through the travel experience and, and have it be the cleanest experience they've ever had in an airport. And then our customers with the Pharrell stations taking advantage of those. Um, we want to highlight that to the campaign. And you'll see this run on, on Facebook, and you'll see it on Instagram. And then you'll also see a video that we'll be uh, uh, showing as well. And what that shows is basically a quick little video piece, a music build with an aircraft arriving. Um, it says, you have moved us by doing your part, staying home. Also fighting on the front lines and helping others. Uh, it's our turn to move you safely throughout the airport on flights to see your loved ones, the destinations you've missed. Find out more at go.renoairport.com. And again, it's all about highlighting the safety experience in the airport and all the efforts we've put into that and will continue to in the coming months. So we hope you'll spread the word to your friends and your relatives. It is safe to fly. We hope to see you soon back at Reno Tahoe International. Happy to take any questions you might have. Well, uh, first, before we jump into questions, thank you very much, Brian, uh, and to everyone, your entire team uh, at the Reno Tahoe Airport Authority, uh, Liza, everyone that helped uh, ensure your participation uh, in today's presentation. Um, really great staff uh, at both RTC of Washoe County and the Reno Tahoe Airport Authority. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we do actually have a couple questions uh, in our chat box already. Uh, I'll open it up to questions just as soon uh, for Amy. Uh, she gets a chance to answer this question from Sean Carey. Uh, Sean's got a question uh, in regards to before the pandemic, uh, the RTC eliminated fixed route transit service uh, in many areas of the country in order to increase service in other areas. Given the significant budget issues facing transit before and after the pandemic, what is the likelihood that these limited fixed routes will ever come back? Thank you. And I think that's Scott Carey. Or uh, Scott Carey. Sorry, Scott. <laughs> so thank you, Scott. Sorry, Scott. Um, and as Scott is well as aware, during the Great Recession, RTC did have to make some substantial service cuts. Um, and it has really taken this long for us to fully get back to where we were from a, a budget standpoint on public transit. Uh, we were poised to make uh, some substantial service increases over the next couple of years to restore a lot of that service. Some of that has actually already taken place. I wanna thank the Federal Transit Administration and the US DOT and our congressional delegation for the CARES Act funding, which really rescued us as a transit agency we would have had to make significant service cuts uh, without that rescue funding. But what it did was allow us to continue our full service, um, maintain our full transit workforce, and to continue with what we already had planned. So one of those that went into effect, or will be going into effect in the fall, is extending our Sun Valley 
transit service up to the new um, Desert Skies Middle School. We know that um, is a really important e extension for that community. And uh, you mentioned eliminating some fixed route service. What we've actually done in two cases, in Sparks last fall and in North Valley's uh, this, this spring, has been to replace a low performing fixed route service with FlexRide. And what we've found is that we've about tripled our ridership when we've done that. Um, in Sparks, for example, we went from about a 50 trips a day to 150 trips a day. So that's been uh, very impactful. We've gotten great customer feedback from folks who say they're glad that now they can order, you know, using their phone or calling dispatch, uh, call up a ride that gets there in about 15 minutes to the front door or the curb of wherever they are and takes them to the curb of wherever they're going to the grocery, doctor, pharmacy, uh, whatever it might be within our flex ride zone, um, or to tie into our fixed route system. Um, so it's more convenient for them. And uh, that seems to be showing in the increased ridership, even though we started our North Valley service uh, with replacing the fixed route with a flex ride uh, zone. Uh, we started that during the COVID uh, stay at home order, uh, but still we, we've had pretty favorable um, growth in that, even just in the last month. So um, I don't know that we'll be adding a lot more fixed route to some of those more outlying suburban areas, uh, but the flex route seems to serve those needs very well. Wonder wonderful, thank you, Amy. Uh, Brian, uh, Scott also has a question for you and the folks at the Reno Tahoe Airport Authority. Uh, Scott's question for you, Brian. Uh, how has the pandemic affected cargo freight and general aviation at the airport? And have these air services seen a similar reduction in air service that commercial air traffic has experienced? Great, thanks for the question, Scott. Appreciate that. Uh, we really haven't seen the effect on cargo and on GA that we saw on passenger service. Uh, actually, a lot of flight training still going on, so we see a lot of our general aviation aircraft flying. Uh, car, uh, our corporate aircraft are still flying. You know, a lot of companies were opting they maybe increase their corporate travel on corporate aircraft because it didn't expose their, their team to large numbers of people. And so we've actually seen those stay strong. And on the cargo side, you know, this is typically the time of year where we see a decrease in cargo. And then we make it up big time when you go into November and early December with, with all the holiday shopping that takes place online. And then those, those purchases are shipped around the country. And what we saw with the pandemic is, is we really stayed strong in cargo. And a lot of that has been people avoiding the grocery store and shopping online. Uh, it was a great way to stay safe, uh, kept our cargo numbers high, and that's FedEx and, and DHL and UPS. And so we've seen those cargo numbers stay up there. And again, the other supplies that were flying through uh, for the pandemic, you know, the, the PPE, uh, those gloves and those masks and, and ventilator parts and things like that were so important for our community. So we really appreciate having a, a healthy, strong cargo operation here at the airport that has really stayed up in its numbers while we lost those passenger numbers. And so. Thankfully, we have that great cargo operation here, and it will stay strong for us as we head into the holidays as well. Wonderful. Thank you very much. Uh, no other questions in the chat box just yet, but are there any questions from anybody uh, online? Now's a, now's a good time to, to put your hand up and ask your question of either Amy or Brian. Going once, going twice. <laughs> Well, it doesn't seem like we have any additional questions, but uh, for those of you uh, with us today, if you did have other questions in the future or something comes to your mind, uh, feel free to send me an email and I would be more than happy to forward your question uh, on to either Amy or Brian and then get you a response. Um, again, uh, I wanted to thank everyone uh, who joined us today uh, for our ongoing bi-weekly series of online educational brown bags. Uh, again, my uh, thanks to Brian and everyone at the Reno Tahoe Airport Authority and Amy and everyone at the Regional Transportation Commission of Washoe County. Uh, as both Amy and Brian pointed out, um, you know, it's, it's, it's not just the people presenting today, but everybody, the entire staff, top to bottom, 
uh, who have really helped keep our transportation systems moving, um, you know, over the course of the last couple months as we continue to recover from this pandemic. Uh, so I don't think it's uh, much of a stretch uh, for me to say on behalf of everyone uh, who's been online for today's presentation, a big thank you to not only Amy and Brian, but everybody at both RTC and the Reno Tahoe Airport Authority. Thank you so very much. Uh, again, our next online educational brown bag will be Wednesday, July 8th. Uh, I probably won't have an opportunity to speak to any of you beforehand, uh, but please have a safe, a healthy, and a fun 4th of July holiday. Uh, this presentation uh, will be posted on the APA Nevada's YouTube channel probably within the next couple of days. And with that, stay safe, stay healthy, and thank you very much. Goodbye.